the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. This is the lens that comes with a lot of entry level cameras, like my Canon T5i. This may very well be the first lens you end up with, or you might have one lying around the house. But can it be used for astrophotography? Hell yeah. And I'm gonna use it to photograph the core of the Milky Way galaxy. It was July 2017 in a dark location somewhere in Greensboro, Vermont, when I used a Canon Rebel and an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens to take my very first astrophoto. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I came up with this blurry, noisy mess of a photo. Now, I think I can do way better with the same setup. So stick around. We're gonna try this out. The 18 to 55 millimeter lens has a maximum aperture of f3.5. Now that may not sound very much compared to more expensive lenses with f2.8 or, or f1.8, but you gotta think, most telescopes don't even have a aperture as fast as 3.5. And if you're a beginner and don't quite know what I'm talking about with all these numbers, the lower your f number, the more light your lens or telescope lets in and the brighter the image will be. This telescope only has an aperture of f eight. That lets in a whole lot less light than this small kit lens that came with the camera. And as a bonus, 18 millimeters is quite wide, so you can do longer exposures before the stars trail, and that's just letting in more photons. With 18 millimeters being such a wide focal length, you don't really need expensive accessories like a star tracker, but I still recommend you invest in one immediately because it will turn all your lenses into very powerful astrophotography lenses. Well, Except for maybe this one. <laughs> Catching the Milky Way core is all about long exposures. Long exposures. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Anyway, to do that, you'll need a good sturdy tripod, preferably with a ball head, so you can move your camera around in any direction with ease, and also, a remote of some kind, because you don't want to be touching your camera at all during the long exposures. Now, if you don't have a remote, your camera does have a two second and a 10 second timer, so you can take pictures without your hands having to be holding down any kind of buttons. How long of an exposure are we talking about here? That's a good question. For a crop sensor camera like my T5i at 18 millimeters, I would say between 13 and 15 seconds is a good starting point. Now, if you want to learn more detailed information about how to set your camera settings and your shutter speed, check out my full Milky Way tutorial right up here, and there's also a link in the description below. That being said, for today, we just need to make sure our camera is in manual mode, set our shutter speed to 15 seconds, aperture f3.5, and an ISO of around 3200. Now let's find a place to shoot. You'll want to set up in a dark location far from city light pollution on a cloudless, moonless night sometime between late March and early October. Check the Stellaria map on your phone or computer to see when and where the Milky Way core is going to rise. So this is the Stellarium app on my phone. We're going to scroll over and look at the southeast. Now we're going to tap the clock in the bottom right corner where it says 1942, or whatever time yours might say. Just tap that, and now we can drag in time. I'm gonna drag until I see the Milky Way coming up. Cause I know it rises in the Southeast. And there it is, right around 11 o'clock. And by midnight, it's good and high in the sky. Okay, let's go find a place to shoot.
So this is where I'm gonna shoot. The Milky Way is gonna be right back there. Unfortunately, there's some clouds back there right now too, but they should be gone by midnight. And hopefully this wind will be too. That's why I'm holding my hand here. I have to cut my microphone. Right over there is a farm with a street light in the distance that will light up. Will, it will light all of this up. That's very lucky. You normally don't get that lucky with lighting in foregrounds. It's normally like a black silhouette. But we'll talk about lighting your foreground more in another video. I just want to show you how a well-planned photo shoot with this goes. Now all we have to do is wait till it gets dark. You know, one thing I don't think about enough is wind. Out there in those fields where there's no trees or hills, the wind can get pretty severe. Luckily, I don't think it's strong enough today to affect my shoot, but it is affecting my audio. The wind noise in my microphone and on my phone is terrible. So this might be a, a voiceover kind of night. What can you do? We're gonna have dinner, and then we're gonna head back out there. So see you there. All right, here we are. Got my camera set up on the tripod. Now I'm just going to dial in my settings that I want to use for the night. And here's what I'm working with right here. I'm going to make sure the two second timer is also set up. Now I'm going to look through my viewfinder and find a bright star to focus on. Turn on my live view and use the digital zoom buttons to zoom in on that star. There we go. Now I'm going to use the focus ring and just turn it until the star is as small of a pinpoint as possible. There we go. Now if you have a strap, you might want to do something about that, especially if it's windy. You don't want, to, you don't want the strap moving around and moving your camera. Let's get all framed up now. I think everything's good. Time to turn off the lights and do our test shot. And here's what it looks like right on the back of the camera. It looks pretty awesome. But if you tried to blow that up or look at it on a bigger screen, it's going to be pretty noisy. And the best way to get rid of that noise is to take a bunch of more images and stack them together. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to take a remote, wireless or wired, and take about 40 more shots. Once I'm done with that, I'll take the lens cap, put it back on, and take at least 20 more shots like that. Then I'll stack them in a free stacking software called Sequitor, and there's a lot more about that in my Milky Way tutorial in the description below. Now we're gonna be done for the night. Well, besides the win, last night was really fun. Now it's time to see if I've been able to improve with the 18 to 55 millimeter setup since 2017. Let's look at my very first astro photo again one more time. Oh God, that's hideous. I don't wanna look at that anymore. Before I show you my final process image from last night, I just want to say thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave me a like and a subscribe. And I love hearing from you guys, so definitely leave me a comment. As always, stay spacey, clear skies, and goodbye.